Kings. He has another master's degree in dental implantology from Sheffield. And he's just currently doing a master's on stem cell research at Bristol Dental uh, School. And he also uh, is involved mentoring there. Shane, would you like to come on the podium? Thank you. I know that most of you don't actually do the things that you should go for the ontology. And really, I'm here as an evangelist to say that it really works better than most people tend to want to do with habits. And so, the system has been around for a very, very long time. In truth, it's been reported since 1980 uh, by Langer and Kalagna. And uh, what connective <coughs> tissue was really going to be doing in periodontology was correct. Uh, the periodontal recession sites. It's the increase in volume of a re- uh, tissue at recession site in the exposed uh, surfaces. It would convert thin gum phenotype A into thick gum phenotype B. This is a phenotype of gingiver that <coughs> does not recede. So, in periodontology, we would have our recession area up there and there would be a conventional relieving incision system done here to move the flap away, expose the root surface, root plane the root surface, leaving all of the uh, incidental propeller. Connected tissue would be taken out of the palate and it would be fixed at a tooth. Now, this is a certain sort of uh, uh, trapeze effect for the suturing to actually hold that connected tissue very well in there. Then the flap would be colonially advanced of the connective tissue and stop it from slopping. But the important part was you had a tooth. Now this is a 24-month follow-up on this patient. It is actually for most people a very perfect result for a sensitive root surface. But it all depended on whether you were able to keep that connective tissue in place. That is different suturing technique from what is conventionally used in uh, periodontal surgery. Very important in the periodontal surgery was this advancement of the uh, flap, it's called the coronally advanced flap, and you've got to hold it in place. The effect of the buccally uh, uh, coronally advanced flap is that you actually move the mucogingival junction coronally. You will decrease your uh, width of keratinized gingival. There is conflict as to how much width the keratinized tissue you require, but the accepted idea is that you require a remedial or residual amount of two millimeters. So, the whole idea of the connected tissue was that it's a thick biotype and it resists uh, recession. The wonderful thing about thick biotype is that you can't see your implants and you can't see the actual. Uh, crown margin, and it helps to maintain gingival morphology. It is shown that if the baseline tissue thickness of your implant was great, then that volume seems to resist all sorts of reflection around your implant. So, the importance was that you need to keep the connected tissue in place if you want to make use of those benefits. Very hard to keep in place because in periodontal surgery you've got a tooth to play in there. When you're talking implantology, you haven't got any tooth at all. And you're going to get stopped. And I've had enough stop. And so I've developed suturing techniques. The washing line, two years ago, I talked about it. You've got a perio situation and you're going to lose a load of teeth. In this particular uh, uh, scenario, you're going to lose all of the lower incisors. And we know that we are going to be left with no bone. And with our natural remodeling, that bone is really going to disappear. Together with that bone disappearance, it's going to be soft tissue disappearance. So I'm going to use what's called the washing line suture technique here, take out the, the teeth, and after that, reflect the flower. We know 
that implants have to be put in a central position along what will be the residual ridge, and they're placed there, massive defects, this is all going to disappear, everything's going to disappear with time, so to give some support to our new volume of connective tissue, we've got BIOS on there, we've got a membrane on there, and then we're going to go up the palate, normal method of periodontology, and we're going to take out a lovely piece of connective tissue, and we're going to keep it in place across here by what's called the washing line, and then suture this surface onto the lingual. Corrosia comes back, lose all of the uh, uh, attached gingiva there, because uh, that's where it's going to go, in the bin, but no, it doesn't. This is six weeks later, that is our level of carotenite uh, 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 gingiva, and that is the day that we're fitting our uh, bridge onto the implants, and that is 30 months later. So, a more extreme case, and we follow the same principles, everything comes out, massive bone loss, and we can expect lots and lots of remodeling to occur there. So, centralized implant placement, uh, uh, BIOS into the voids, and then covered with the membrane, and back up to the palate, get as much connective tissue as possible, and suture it into the surface, or over the surface itself. And you can see here, actually, the lingual suture. Cronally advanced back to close it up. That's what it looks like on the day of fitting the uh, bridge. And that is exactly six months later. And that was our bridge on that day. That is our implants in place. And 12 months later, it's looking like that. And then 36 months in, the occlusal function is like that. So, much more extreme case. Uh, we've got a lot of granulomas, uh, radiolucency, there are no granulomas to stitch up there to be expected. And conventional perio uh, uh, relieving incisions uh, expose the whole area, massive defect will be there, and it's all cleaned out, implants in there, plates uh, uh, displaced, BIOS, membrane over the top, and there is a washing line and there's fixtures down there to hold it exactly as close we want it and coronally advance. And that is, they were going to fit the craft, but this one is 24 months later. Uh, notice that the actual marginal plant uh, uh, implant containing the crown is much lower down on where it was being. In. Much more extreme case, there is no attached into it up there, there's a meteor dens case, meteor dens together with the other impacted teeth removed, massive defect, there was no platinum gingiva there, but the implants is in by what's down the side, and membrane over the top, and again, washing line along there, fixation into there, chromely advanced flat, and that is 24 months later. Okay? There was no tissue there. We have created a width of keratinized gingiva. And that's where it came from. There was nothing. If you had just taken out these teeth, you could expect a total coronal place displacement of that mucogingival juncture all the way down to the uh, crest. So, another method that I developed is the blade or buckle plug. 20 year old extraction site, we can see where the mucogenical junction's gone to. Yes, and we also see a lovely depression in there. Patients now have decided to clean herself up. I am actually only concentrating on this area. We can see that many other things were done at the same time. Crown has been removed. This is only to exaggerate, again, what we are faced with in here. Buckle glove really means we're going to do a continuous curricular incision, preserving all of the uh, incidental papillae, and the implants have gone in there, but no bone graft has gone in there at all. Right? This 20-year-old uh, 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 alveolus, you will not get any bone growing onto that, and what we're going to do is take our tissue out of the palate, and 
it is so underneath the um, mucosa that we have. Okay? And uh, the flap is then replaced. Increase in volume, suturing that's been used is actually six uh, rapid. There is no compression of any of the papillae here. Uh, there will be no recession, as you can see. That's our own plant in place, and that's where everything came from. You can see some other bits of work were done elsewhere. And that is our uh, result after 12 months. And that is where we came from. And so the Tux replacement sort of uh, uh, volume there. Uh, there is a movement of the mucogenital junction uh, apically, and that is after a few more months. The volume remains as it is. Of particular note is your crustal tissue, the vertebra, the crustal heart tissue, which I'll come back to. So, some epithelial connective tissue graphs as, as a volume enhancer have been well recorded. But even though 2009 is down there, very few people are actually doing it. Another case, here we've got a less than optimal uh, cervical margin, and we have got internal resorption as well as the fracture. We can expect a very large defect. Again, the tooth is removed, together with the ribs, uh, without slipping the flap at this stage. Buckle glove that is done. That is our defect, and implant goes in there, blatantly displaced once more, and into the site. We're going to take our connected tissue out of the palate and suture it underneath the upper blood itself. By what's been put down the alveolar void, and we've got our membrane at the top. You can see our suture in there, it's in the place. And we get a temporary bridge on top of that to uh, maintain our papilla, or help maintain our papilla. And that's what it looks like after five months. And after that, that five months, we come along and take off uh, our temporary, put it in our uh, uh, inning cap, and three weeks later, the crown is actually going to be fitted. That's what it looks like then. And 18 months later, that is the result that you will get the uh, selected margin of the downward and its maintenance of our uh, uh, with the ginger bone. Again, to take special notes of the medium and distal uh, density. So, another one is a variation on that theme, which is my pouch. We have got a bridge here. We have got no supported tissue here. Uh, when I lift a flap, I can expect to see a very, very big void along there. So we're actually going to just work in the margins there. And tooth comes out, and I have put my Dusa periodic elevator up there to release that tissue and up to the palate. Take it out. That's what we're going to press underneath there. So it's into place, the void is there going to be filled up and covered with uh, by a dye. And that is uh, our flat back into place. And that is a temporary bridge on the top. And that's what the crown looks like. We're fitting it. And that is what it looks like 36 months in function. And very little loss of tissue. Uh, this area where the bridge was, and uh, I think most of us would be very pleased with that sort of uh, contour. And once again, we've got a very lovely uh, uh, meeting with the crystal density. So, maintenance of the width of cracks and the ginger is what we want. We see this sort of uh, infection, we know that it's going to be an April migration of that tissue as it heals it up. We're going to expect to lose whatever is there, but using the same sort of method, we don't. And that's their fitting that crown on that patient. And then a few months later, 36 months later, we've got total maintenance of the width of the of ginger. And again, we look at that meteor crestal, the meteor and distant crestal. So, moving on to another style of 
uh, connective tissue grafted fixation. It's variation on the buccal glove, maybe the glove. That's coming out. We don't see a lot of bone loss. And what we've done here is relieving incision to avoid the papilla. Uh, it's well known with the incision, true. That's the sort of defect we've got. Defect is more exaggerated. We get our two implants up there. But already you can see that the connective tissue has been put underneath uh, and secured in the upper flap. And that's what it looks like just before I'm going to put in uh, my xenograph to cover it with the membrane. There's a membrane in place, and you can see here how uh, the connective tissue and everything is put back in place with no great tension on any tissues. And a temporary bridge is put in there. Six weeks later, that's what the temporary bridge is looking like. And so if we go back to the beginning, what we're interested in is this width of gratin and ginger, and that's what we get at six months with the temporary bridge, the lovely bit of keratinized gingiva. It is a super recession case. So this is real thin gut phenotype. The uh, implants have been uncovered, healing capsule and day of fitting our bridge. It's looking like that. And that is what we get at 12 months. And those, those are our implants in place. So it is this that we maintain. But these people hydrogen and to resist that. So, another very nice one I find is to deal with a former perio patient susceptible to recession, thinning up phenotype once again, lovely depression, and that is our radiograph to begin with. Tissue out of the palate, you'll notice that there's always thick tissue in the palate, in one of my cases. And the implant has been put in there in a crystal manner. A healing cap has been put on, and the uh, uh, crystal tissues have been uh, adapted to the healing cap, not to affect this area of the gut. An uh, uh, incision is made there, an incision is made there, and that is passed underneath, and it's seen. And dry implant. And that's what it looks like after five minutes. And that's it, just on the day of fitting the crown that's coming in. There's a very nice photograph to show that our increase in volume. And again, notice that increase in volume and notice the session areas. And here we want to be resisting everything that's happening on those other teeth. And 12 months later, that is what we've got. We've still got our receded areas. Nothing is actually happening to our implant crown. And that is our marginal tissue. So we've got increased here in volume. There is no more depression at all. Change all the case, perio case. Going to get one, and we are going to do just crystal incision into that area, uh, secure the crystal incision around the healing cap. Here, this is just to show how far through we can go with the periosteal elevator to introduce our uh, connective tissue and then uh, suture the ends together, fit our temporary bridge. And then six months later, it's looking like that. Beautiful width of Karazin and Ginger. Remember where it came from? And 18 months later, it's looking like that. Superb. There is no change in that with the Karazin and Ginger in the Ginger Junction. And that is our radiogram. Going further, much more complicated, uh, we have. Absolute recession, thin gum phenotype, doesn't really look like it, but it is. And we're going to take out the two teeth, implants down the holes, place it displays. We're not going to mess up any of the marginal tissue. Uh, incision is through the side. And 
here I'm showing the actual suturing method, uh, leading that suture through, and that is our implant, and that's then fitting our crowns, that's the crown fit, and they're 24 months in inclusion function. You would be very happy to see that on every single one of your crowns. It's absolutely superb. And that is where we came from. Extremely robust looking tissue there. And this last set is actually to show where the idea came from. Super recession, thin gum phenotype at the extreme, and we're going to do what was a periodontal idea. I'm going to do relieving incisions, we're going to do uh, uh, relieving of the uh, incidental paper. There's two incisions that happen here, so that when you got that, it's there. And we're going to clean out all the defects, implant into place, bad light on the top, and that was my connected tissue problem. Not very good. Expect some sort of dislodgement of it, but <coughs> maybe it didn't because we've got some interesting thickness there. That is the day of fitting it. We always expect some sort of gingival rebound uh, uh, in a healthy situation, thick on phenotype. And well, yes, from months later, it was that. We still got this super recession, and that is our crown of that so implant that was 12 months. And We've got a special case there to show that increased width of KGT around dental implant is associated with a lower knee alveolar bone loss. Very lovely patient to read. All of the uh, radiographs that I've shown have shown that lovely connective tissue and the lovely crest of bone that is in association with it. This is 72 months in function. There is no sign of any recession on that activity. And that is the yeah. And that is the bone at 72 months, and that is what we wanted to see. There is no recession. So, all the work's done by Pearl Pet Ceramics, and for anybody who's interested in the methods of uh, uh, that fixation, there is a set of papers. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Clayton. Uh, he comes from uh, Bristol. He has a master's degree uh, from Wales University.